this is critical thinking on the second class of tissues. And I'm going to do blood, muscle, and nervous tissue. I'm going to do three different kinds of questions and show you how you should answer them. This first one is kind of a clinical problem. Here it's talking about functions of cells and while it might seem rather easy, sometimes you might get questions like this, so by the process of elimination you choose the correct answer. And here this is a question where you have to pick the incorrect statement and you must therefore know your material really well. Let's go to this first one where it tells you that Amy is suffering from Lyme disease uh, which is a parasitic infestation. So it doesn't matter what disease she's suffering from, I don't expect you to know that. But what is important is I tell you that this is a parasitic infestation which you have learned about, uh, certain cells which are increased in this kind of, uh, when someone has this kind of problem. Now, if you did a differential white cell count, which is when you count the number of white cells in a total count of 100 cells, it asks you which of the cells below will show an increase in number. So therefore, parasitic infestation is the key or operative word here. And then you start thinking which of the cells that are listed below increase whenever there is a parasitic infestation. And the correct answer is eosinophil because this increases whenever there's an allergic response or when there is parasitic infestation. So therefore, that's the correct answer. These are, uh, the rest of them are uh, not choices in this case. They have different functions. Let's go to this next question. So here it says, all of the functions below are carried out by neuroglia, except, and again, it might seem a little easy if you know your material, which is good, but if you don't, let's say you get a question like this and you don't, um, you know, you're not sure of the uh, of uh, the choices, then start thinking, is there any uh, neuroglia which provides nutrition? And yes, there is. There is uh, astrocytes do that. Any which uh, call, which myelinate uh, nerve fibers and yes we have oligodendroglia and naturally these are in the central nervous system any which carry out phagocytosis and yes they are these are microglia so all these three are carried out by neuroglia but conduction of impulses is the one which is done by neurons and not neuroglia so therefore this is something which is not carried out by neuroglia so therefore this is the correct answer so this is the way you kind of would look at questions which are in this format. Now let's go to the next one. And here you have a, you about five statements and you have to choose which is the incorrect statement. So it's really important to read this very, very carefully because then you have to think, you know, you have to read each word carefully because sometimes some words, you know, you expect it to say, is but it may be saying is not so therefore you know sort of read everything very very carefully so let us look at the statements uh, individually so the first one hypolemal nuclei are seen in skeletal muscle fibers and this is a true statement because if you look at a skeletal muscle fiber which is like a cylinder you have these nuclei which are like ants in a line and they are present just below the sarcolemma so that is true Cardiac muscle is classified structurally as striated, and that is right because it has striations, but functionally it is involuntary, so that is also true. So this also is a true statement. Uh, you know, just like uh, skeletal muscle is classified structurally as striated, but functionally is voluntary. So this is, you know, so for cardiac muscle, this is true. Then third one, the smooth muscle of the uterus is capable of hypertrophy and hyperplasia. And this is true because this is one structure in the body where the muscle can undergo hypertrophy, where the muscles, the size of an individual fiber increases. And hyperplasia is where the number of muscle fibers increase. It is only in the uterus where it is physiologically possible. So this is true. And another thing I would like to tell you is while reading these questions, you're actually also learning because you're, you know, this may come in another question in your test or quiz. So therefore, you know, oh, uh, you must sort of keep in mind, oh, I read this somewhere, and yes, so that was true. So, you know, that way you sort of, you're also learning while you're actually reading and taking your uh, quizzes and tests. 
So let's look at this one then. A demyelinating disease will cause slow conduction of impulses and this is also true because uh, when uh, a nerve fiber is myelinated, so you have these nodes of Ranvier this way and the impulse jumps from node to node. So it's fast conducting. Now when it is demyelinated, what happens is the myelin uh, is removed. So, you know, the there is no myelin here, so what happens, the impulse travels very, very slowly because it's not able to go from one node to the other because normally it would have jumped over the myelin, but the myelin is missing. So it does cause slowing of impulses and multiple sclerosis is one such disease which, where you see this. So this is also true. Now let's look at the last one. The dorsal root ganglia have bipolar neurons. And this is the incorrect statement. So for this, this one is the right answer because bipolar neurons are seen in sense organs. Dorsal root ganglia has this is a unipolar. Now, should you not know this and you come down and you look at all the statements and it appears that everything appears to be true, always go back and read because you may not have read something carefully. And then that's where you'll pick up whatever the right statement is.